I'm always amazed what a little paint and a couple of hours can do. Today I'm sharing how to create a faux marble finish. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. We've been having some freezing cold weather here in the greater Toronto area, and it makes me want to hunker down and stay toasty warm at home. And this gave me time and inspiration to update and restyle this side table that was in my living room. For those of you that have been following me for many years, it, this was about seven years ago, I turned this salvaged cable spool and leftover table base into a faux barn wood table. Today, let's turn it into a gorgeous faux marble finish to totally update the look. Here's what the reverse side of this cable spool looked like before I gave it the faux wood finish. And as you can tell, it's pretty rough. The farmhouse faux wood finish I did back in 2017 held up really well, but I'm in the mood for a change and it's fun to see how a little paint can totally transform an entire look. Uh, but for this marble finish, I'll need to fill in all these grooves. So I started by gloving up and bringing out my all-purpose Bondo putty. Uh, I think I've mentioned this in a few other videos. You can get Bondo uh, in the wood fill type. You can get in the automotive type. I just use the all-purpose putty because it's a little less expensive and I really haven't noticed any difference from the wood filler one. Bondo comes in a two-part system. So what I do is I give the uh, mixture in the container a really good mixing because you will notice that there is separation when you first open the lid. And then I put it onto a paper plate. I like working with about a golf-sized ball, um, a golf ball size of Bondo, and then I add in about a pea size of the hardener. And because this Bondo dries very quickly, between 10 and 15 minutes, it will totally dry rock hard. This enables me enough time to fill in whatever I'm going to be filling in, whether it's hardware holes or in this case, the grooves in the tabletop. Whenever I have larger cracks or holes to fill, I do like using Bondo because it is drillable, it does not shrink, and it is so durable hard. And it dries so fast, like it's a real time saver. And then I've been liking to do a two-step filler, a two-part filler. I'll add the Bondo into the large area smooth it out with my putty knife and then I go back in after it's dried and sanded and do all the little detail filling with Dixie Belle mud and I'm loving this wood filler because it can be hand sanded so easily and it really fills in all those extra details beautifully. Here's what the tabletop looked like with the Bondo filling in the majority of the grooves and with the Dixie Belle mud filler on top of the Bondo. Now it's ready for really good sanding. I brought this tabletop into my sanding room and using a 120 grit sandpaper, I started smoothing out all this filler. The less overfill you have with the Bondo, the easier your sanding is going to be. Once everything was sanded perfectly smooth and I removed all the dust, it was time to bring it back into my paint room and apply a stain blocking primer. As you can see, I use the roller to do all my edges and grooves and I just use the tip of the roller to get into the grooves on the edges and then I smooth it out with the length of the roller. It works really, really well. 
So once the primer had dried and I could see all the little remaining divots and little chips, and obviously this cable spool wood was rough, like really rough. So when I gave it the prime on top, I could see all the other little details that need filling in. So I took my Dixie Bell mud and a plastic wood cutting knife and I went to filling in all these little divots. And as you can see, it turned out that I pretty much skimmed the whole top. <laughs> the nice thing about skimming with the Dixie Bell mud is it sands so easily, as I've mentioned a good few times. So really, you could just take a medium grit sandpaper and hand sand it really quickly. Once I removed all the sanding dust, I brought it back into my paint room and painted the base coat of white cap. Now I did not reprime because this silk all-in-one mineral paint is just that. It has a primer and a top coat included. So I just went ahead, painted the white base, and now for the fun part. Let's start making this tabletop look like marble. So I took some Baja Gray, which is my mid-tone color, and I added it onto the tabletop using a sea sponge roller. These sea sponge rollers uh, are great for creating a lot of texture, which is, I, for the marble finish, I wanted some texture and layers into it. So this was a great start. I misted the sea sponge roller with my water mister, rolled it in the Baja Gray, and then rolled it onto the white base to create a bunch of texture. Now, if you don't have one of these sea sponge rollers, it's no biggie because a paper towel will work just as well. It'll just take you a little bit longer, but uh, it's no biggie at all. You could just dab it on in different areas and then use your shop towel to create different textures on the tabletop. Once I was happy with how much gray was on this white base, I took my water mister and started spraying a little water on top of it. Using little sprays of water and a shop towel. Now here I am just softening out all this color. While the paint is still wet and using a large fluffy brush, I went in and started feathering out all this gray. If you find that your paint is drying a little too fast, don't be afraid to add a little bit of water and just keep playing with it until you really like the look. With these faux finishes, there's really no right or wrong. And I know when I first start them, I'm not gonna lie, I'm always a little intimidated because I think, oh my God, can I do this? But it's just the getting started part that I have to get over. And then once I get into it, it's so much fun because as I mentioned, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just keep playing with the paint until you like what you see. And a great uh, idea when you're doing a faux marble finish is to grab a picture off Google or online somewhere of a piece of marble that you really really like the looks of and then just have that by your side as a reference and you can kind of go back look at the picture see where the mid-tones are see where how much white is in there see where the veins are kind of laying and lying and it will really give you a, a, an idea a base start of how you want your piece of marble or your faux marble to look I find this very very helpful and what I always like to tell myself is, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, maybe I put on the gray paint. I hate what it looks like. I'll just roll over some white paint again and try it again, <laughs> right? So it's it, paint is so easily fixed. I sometimes have to remind myself of this and just say, Denise, you know what? If, it, if you muck it up, just roll over another coat and, and start over again. It's not a big deal. Once I was happy with how I feathered everything out and I made a super big mess on my workspace table, I took out my heat gun and dried this mid-tone color so I could get on with the next step. And here's where I'm taking my own advice. <laughs> Once I looked at it after it dried, I thought, you know what? I think I would like a little bit more white. I think there's a little too much gray. So what I did was I went in and 
with my seafoam roller and I added some more white texture. And actually this is really good because it layers it on and marble really does have a lot of layers. Like when you look at it, it does not look flat. It looks like you have, you can actually look into it and see the different colors and the different layers. So I added on some more white and I did the exact same technique with patting it with my um, shop towel, misting it with water, and then feathering it out with my brush. Once the gray and white base was dry, now I went in and started drawing in the marble veins. And I used a thin artist brush. Ideally, it would be great if I had a feather because I, on YouTube, I always see these masters at the faux marble finish using a feather. And that really makes interesting grain patterns. But I do not have one. So I just used a thin artist brush. And again, looking at a reference picture I had, I went ahead and I added in the marble veins by using very irregular irregular lines. You don't want straight lines. You don't want perfectly curved lines and you don't want the pattern to be perfect on your project. So you don't want it to go, uh, you know, right down the center or just look at a reference picture. And if you look at the marble lines, they're very irregular and they're kind of willy nilly all over the place. So I went ahead, I added this in black sands. I wanted my veins to be quite dark. I used my water mister and I added water and then you see the paint spreading. Like as soon as you miss that vein with water, you're gonna see your paint starting to spread because it's wet. Then I took a soft brush and I started patting it and feathering it out. If you find that there's a little too much water, because I did find some of my water was kind of puddling around my around the marble veins. So what I did was I took a shop towel and I just dabbed some of that excess water up. While the paint is wet, it's very easily fixable. So here you can see that I'm feathering it out with a larger brush. And I'm also using my shop towel to kind of correct where the paint is going. Painting the first few veins, I, I'm gonna admit is a little intimidating, but then once you get into it, it is a lot of fun. Once I had my marble tabletop complete, it was time to top coat for protection. I chose to use Dixie Belle Gator Hide. It's one of my favorite top coats because it's so easy to apply. And you guys may remember I used it on my kitchen table makeover a good few years ago. And that sucker has held up amazing. And every day it gets used and abused and cleaned and it has heat on it. And this this gator hide is, is really tough. For my furniture makeovers, I often spray it on, but it's super easy to apply using one of these uh, blue sponge applicators as well, which they're very inexpensive, I think two or three dollars. And all I do is I dip it into the gator hide, I rub off the excess, and I go ahead and rub the sponge and gator hide onto the project.
I wait around two hours for the first coat to dry, and then I come back and do the exact same thing for my second coat. Uh, I think I added three coats onto this tabletop. Two coats is usually sufficient, but I added three, and I just wait two hours in between each coat. And that's it for the marble tabletop. Now I'll show you how I did the base and I can't wait to show you how it all looks put together. As I mentioned, the base was uh, from a mismatched set where the tabletop was MIA. So what I did was I used my orbital sander to scuff sand the bottom base part and I used a medium grit sandpaper to hand sand the pedestal part. And it's really, really easy. I, I wasn't trying to get any of the original paint off. I was just trying to scuff this up. And you'll know you did a really good job of scuff sanding when you see some of the dust start coming off. And you'll notice that it's a matte looking finish rather than your original finish. Once the bottom of the table was all sanded down and the dust was removed, it was time to paint. I used Black Sands All-in-One Mineral Paint, which again has the primer and the top coat already included. I used a large purdy brush and I used my slap it on technique. And I know this looks really bizarre, but it is the perfect way to paint anything that's rounded. For instance, maybe chair spindles, uh, stair spindles, uh, this oval base. If you don't want any brush strokes on it, just slap the paint on. You put a little less than you usually would onto your paintbrush and you slap it on back and forth and believe me, no brush marks whatsoever. So I just worked my way around this pedestal base using the slap it on technique. I'll also include this uh, a, a full tutorial on this paint technique in the cards above and also the description down below. While the first coat on the pedestal was drying, I went ahead and painted the bottom of this table. Once both had completely dried, it was ready for coat number two. Uh, the base of this table took two coats of the black sands. And here I'm applying and doing the same slap it on technique with a little short brush. So you can do this with a longer handled brush. You could do it with a short brush, uh, but check out how you do not see any brush marks whatsoever, even as I'm doing this. And the paint lays really, really nicely. So no brush marks while it's wet. And certainly after it all levels out and it dries, it looks like a perfectly sprayed on finish. I waited for everything to dry and the next day I assembled the table and let's take a look at the before. And here's the faux marble after and I am 
loving it i love it so much i went to home sense and i bought a new lamp i bought this lady planter i just think it looks fabulous in the corner of my living room i'm so happy with how it turned out i really hope you like the way it looks as well i'd love to hear your thoughts about this paint technique in the comments down below also, me and my video editor are doing the uh, videos a little differently. If you've noticed, we have not been adding music and are trying to make them a little more informative uh, and a little longer. So let me know what you think of the way these videos are. I want, I want to make them good for you. Uh, so let me know if you like this format or if you prefer them a little shorter with a little bit of fun music. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, so. Please feel free to give this video a like, give it a share if you think somebody else might find it useful. You can also find me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Be sure to subscribe and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous week. Thanks so much for joining me today. Take care.